The simplest way I can explain the concept of a wormhole is this. Try to picture a real earthworm eating its way through an apple. At one point, you'll see one part of the wormhole sticking through the top of the fruit, while its rear end is poking through the bottom. In this example, the worm itself acts like a tunnel, which connects two places in space, or two different places in time, or even a combination of both. In theory, a wormhole could help you travel to the same place you're at right now, but years ago, or instantly transport you to another continent. It can also help you travel back to when the ancient pyramids were being constructed. The concept was first theorized in 1916. Though back then, people didn't call them wormholes. It was then studied by Einstein and his fellow scientist Nathan Rosen back in 1935. But it all started with Einstein's theory of general relativity. He had a hunch that Isaac Newton's idea of gravity as a force wasn't completely right. So he began working on many different experiments to prove his theory. In the simplest of terms, Einstein's theory of general relativity says that gravity is a curving or warping of space. The more mass an object has, the more it warps the space around it. Imagine a heavy ball resting on a trampoline. Because of the ball's mass, the rubber sheet under it is warped under the weight. It's the same with our sun. It's big enough to curb space across our solar system. That's why our planet and other objects surrounding us orbit around the star. Now, let's keep our attention on the same trampoline. If there's no pressure applied to it, its surface stays flat. Now imagine two points on this fabric, symmetrically placed on each side of the trampoline. Looking at them from this perspective, there's no possibility of them ever touching each other. But if an object is heavy enough, this flexible fabric can stretch so much that two points might potentially meet. The tunnel between those two points would be a wormhole. They're basically bridges that connect two places in the fabric of space and time that have no chance of ever meeting in normal circumstances. Wormholes can also be seen as shortcuts. Yeah. Problem is, we don't have any of these wormholes in our universe, or at least none that we know of. Scientists have no proof so far that they exist, and we also don't have any idea how they can form to begin with. What we do know so far is that they could theoretically exist. Hey. To move forward with our story about wormholes, we also need to talk about black holes. Oh my God. They're points in space where gravity has so much force that even light cannot escape them. Gravity here becomes so intense that matter gets squeezed into a tiny space. We know that this can happen when a star, like the Sun, is dying. Uh. At the beginning of their lives, a star's hydrogen ignites in its dense, hot core. Because of its gravity, it tries to draw in its own mass into a tiny point. But as long as it has the energy generated by hydrogen fusion, it also pushes objects outward. If we look at it this way, the life of a star is a delicate balance of forces that can last millions or even trillions of years. These forces are also the ones keeping our planet in place and making sure we move constantly at the same speed and trajectory. Once that star's energy is exhausted, the only force remaining is that of gravity. Hence, some stars, those that are big enough, become black holes. Since light itself cannot escape their force, we people can't visualize black holes. For the human eye, they're invisible. We need special tools with unique telescopes to help us point them out in the universe. Now back to the wormholes. We have yet to see what a wormhole looks like. But scientists have theorized that they are extremely unstable. Why? Because in simple terms, they're made out of a black hole and a white hole touching each other. Okay, what? And as far as we've studied them by now, black holes at one point become infinitely dense and the pressure becomes unimaginable. Once you enter a black hole, there's little chance you'll make it out the other side. Some astronomers say that even if we could find a wormhole, and we could technically enter it, and it would rapidly collapse on itself. Even the tiniest bit of extra mass, like that of our bodies for example, can result in the wormhole popping out like a rubber band that's been stretched too hard. So, wormholes, huh? 
We haven't seen them, but we do have some math that can back them up. Black holes? We can't technically see them ourselves, but we do have some gadgets that can help us with that. But there are some theories about the universe out there that might have caught your eye in the past, too. If you've watched the movie Matrix, you might have heard about the simulation theory. This is one of those hypotheses that doesn't come from scientists, but rather from philosophers. We know that all the information we have surrounding us Sounds, images, texts, and textures of the things we touch are translated to us by our brains. If our brains are the windows to the outside world, who is to say we aren't living inside an illusion? It may sound outrageous, but some famous thinkers of the world have really considered this possibility. The simulation theory can't be listed as a truly scientific one. If it fails the basic test, there's no way to prove if it's true or false. What about life on other planets? There are many scientific projects taking place all over the world looking at ways humankind can survive outside the Earth should we ever have to. Like the Houghton Mars Project, which is taking place on Devon Island, located in the Canadian Arctic archipelago. Conditions here are so harsh that scientists believe if we can make it here, we can survive on Mars too. That's because the soil stays frozen throughout the seasons. Also, the eastern part of the island is covered by a thick ice cap all year round. Since almost no plants are growing here, there are no animals that could have adapted to these conditions. Despite all the scientific effort, some seem to believe there's some sort of life form on Mars already. NASA's Perseverance and Curiosity rovers take regular pictures of the reddish planet's surface. You can check out these pictures on the internet for yourself if you want to. Over time, some odd shapes have appeared here and there in these pictures, making some people believe people are living there already. Back in 2008, one of the rovers took a picture of a rock that looked very much like a female figure. Other photos seem to show animal-shaped figures, utensils, or other Earth-like objects. Again, there's little to no proof of this theory as rocks can be of all sorts of shapes and sizes. And if you look at the pictures, it does make you wonder. We may find it hard to travel way over there, but we can theorize that our observable universe has an edge and an ending. This fact raised a question for many scientists and philosophers. Could our universe be just one of many existing in a multiverse? One possible scenario depicted to explain the multiverse is trying to imagine a bunch of universes as separate bubbles, constantly coming to be and moving. Since we haven't figured out all the features of the universe we live in, who's to say there aren't many more? As interesting as this theory might be, we have no observable evidence that we live in a world with multiple universes. So far, we can just imagine different bubbles of time and space, where the rules of physics might be different. Some might lack gravity, while others may exist without ever seeing the light. 